Hi, this is Adele, and you are going to have a wonderful time today <laughs> with a fantastic and very talented interior designer. She's a good friend from New Orleans, and she just has put out a book called Soul of the Home, Designing with Antiques. And it's already sold out, and I think they're ordering several more, or you know, a ton more, and it'll probably sell out, and a ton more, so you definitely want to get it. And um, she gave me a copy last night, and I have to say, I could not put it down. This is so much more than just a book on antiques and furniture. It has beautiful aesthetics. It is a story. You will be gripped. So let me just introduce you to Tara Shaw. Hi, I'm Tara Shaw. Thank you so much, Adele, for inviting me. Oh, this is so wonderful. And um, I, I want to get to the book, but I want to get to you first because this is just such an opportunity for me. I never thought I'd be so lucky to get you to have an interview. And um, one of my main purposes is I love to hear about creativity from different people in different fields. And you have just an aesthetic and a beautiful, talented way that you put things together that seem so creative for interiors. It's like an installation. So um, can you define or what, tell me what you think of, you know, as, that you would describe as creativity? Wow. So, you know, creativity comes to me in so many different forms. I feel like most of the time I get a download. I feel like when I'm working on a project, I will walk the project or if I'm thinking about creating furniture or something like that, what happens to me is I feel like I will get a download into what that should be. You know, I'm, I, I'm not off the cuff. I then process that internally. You know, I meditate on the process. Let's say if I'm working, you know, with someone in their home and they have explained what they're trying to achieve, I internalize what they're telling me. And I feel that so many times, I mean, it's come to me in dreams, uh, just a lot of times randomly when I'm walking in the park or I'm thinking about the project or possibly I've shelved it, so an idea will come to me. And that is my creative process. I um, really, I meditate and meditate until I feel like I have the answer. Uh, so sometimes you have to be creative in the box you're given. Because I've had restrictions before where I really wasn't, I wasn't able to use my whole creative process because sometimes you have to work within the box you're given but a lot of times you know clients will be very open and allow you to go on this journey let's say we're going on the journey together that is probably one of the most successful design um partnerships you can have is when you and the client are on the journey together because I respond to feedback I you know because I I don't want to replicate anything I've done in the past and I want the project to really reflect the client's soul so I'm asking them to be part of the process, which is meditative, uh, you know, to pull from within so then I can really expound on that and make this home something that, you know, will fulfill really their dream that they had for their next revision of their home. Well, I have to say, in looking through um, the book and also being in your home, this is Tara's home, um, and so you'll see a lot of it in the book, and also she shows you a lot of um, other, uh, you know, places that she's designed. But one of the beautiful things that stood out to me is the way you bring contemporary 
to the antiques. You know, can you tell me a little bit about how that works for you or what it brings to a space? I believe, you know, to have a successful, well-layered interior, you need um, to draw from different periods. I, of course, have a love of antiquity because one-of-a-kind finds will really anchor a space, anchor a room. But working around that, if it was all antiquity, you would feel dated, I mean, of the period, which is really not comfortably how we live today. So it's the addition of contemporary art. Of course, I have one of your paintings. And um, it's the addition of contemporary art, mid-century furniture, the layering with antiquity, current textiles. It is the process of layering blue chip items for me that really give your interiors a very long lifespan because you don't, I really, you know, I don't want to be pigeonholed into a trend. I mean, we're looking for longevity in our homes and uh, we're spending so much time in them now. I think that's extremely important to love what you're surrounded by. Oh, well, and just being in this one room, I could spend hours <laughs> looking at all the details, like look at the chair Tara's sitting in. It is just exquisite. And um, just so many of the details. And it's a very calm feeling too, which I think people need right now um, going through this difficult period. But also just, I would think in your home, you wanna feel calmness. Do you find that, do, you, do your clients, when they ask you to do, I mean, they, they must know your style and have seen it in other people's homes and love it to get you, but is there, um, do they say um, in particular or describe the feeling, like I want to have it calm or I want it energetic or something like that? So, you know, when I'm talking with the client, obviously I'm trying to hear hear what they're saying. Some people, you know, will not really, they can't really put their finger on what the end game is for their home. But a lot of times they want to, they're extremely busy people. And that's been, you know, the majority of my client base. It, they want to come home and decompress. And I, uh, I love that. You know, the greatest achievement is when they say we never want to leave our home. You know, we used to rush out to the gym or rush out to the club or, um, but now they don't want to leave their home. So that's really, you know, that's the end game for me is to hear that feedback. You know, that's, that validates that I did my job right. So. Well, and let's go back a little bit, uh, go back and, and how did you come to do this? Because you have done, you know, you go to Europe several times a year. You fly all over and do different people's homes. So how did you get started in doing this design? Well, I fell in love with antiquity. I started going to Europe and shipping containers of one-of-a-kind finds, selling just really to the trade. And it was uh, during that time, I had moved to New Orleans. I'd been here just a few years, and I got a phone call on a, I think it was a Sunday, and it was Harry Connick Jr., and he said, uh, you know, Jill and I are in town. We want to come to your house. You know, my home had just made the cover of Random Magazine and my warehouse, and I was, you know, frankly, surprised and you know and elated and I said you know please come over I, I'd, I'd love to meet you and so I remember hanging up the phone and I had to lie down I had a galley kitchen that I was living in my second Victorian at the time I literally had to lie down on the bricks and I thought take a deep breath <laughs> You know, all right, here we go. You know, I open the door, they come in and they say, why don't you come to Connecticut and do this in our home? And I said, well, you know, 
I'm an importer. I'm a wholesaler. I, um, you know, I don't know if I had the bandwidth. And they, you know, as I said, if they would have asked me to roof their house, I would have probably roofed their house. But I said, yes, you know, they were just, I mean, the most charming couple you've ever met in your whole life. So I said, yes. And so what really happened there, I, I started, I probably did free design all my life. Cause you know, I remember doing, you know, friends, homes and rooms. I just never got paid for it. I never asked to be paid for it, you know, so this was my first paying j job. But um, right after that, uh, Emeril and Alden Lagasse asked me, this was right before they got married, to work on their home, you know, in Lakeview in New Orleans. I was elated. I was, you know, I was so concerned with every detail, as I am today. I mean, when you are, um, when you are like a type A personality, you don't really rest until you feel like you've had, you have everything in place. But, um, so they asked me to do their home and then I did several other homes for them. So then it became just word of mouth. The last chapter in the book, uh, starting from scratch, this is a World Series baseball player and his wife and their, ch I mean, unbelievable family, adorable. We call them party of five. But um, they started buying, their, their mother was a designer and they started buying furniture for me over a decade ago. So I think, you know, all these are just relationships that have happened that have turned into design jobs. And um, one family, you, I worked with the parents, and then I worked with three of their sons in their homes, and then the sons would get a new home. So I thought, you know, it's just, it's really about relationships. That's really what it's about. Yeah. Well, it's just amazing because I've always admired your style and how you put things together and you just have this creative and super artistic like brilliance to be able to put all these things together i mean it really is a challenge for most people i could never put a house together like that um, a painting is different and art is different um but i just think it's just remarkable what you've done and i just i'm amazed do you have any um like stories of people that you've worked with that are like really stand out a little bit like that's funny or that's different than other people that you work with? Yes. Uh, you know, each job has its own personality. And we have, you know, designers in-house that work on these jobs. And this is one of the things, Adele, I have to say. I have this big talk with them. I said, you know what? What you hear on the job stays in-house you don't talk to your husband about that. You don't talk to your boyfriend about that because we live in a very small world, you know, and you just lock that under your tongue, okay? <laughs> Got that. So, you know, we're in lockdown because we, being in someone's home and working so intimately with them, I mean, when someone's really trusting you with their pocketbook, I mean, you're in a, a true relationship of trust and so um, we're su we're super private and um, don't talk about it because you know I, we really have one degree of separation a lot of times <laughs> you know with other people so we that's one of the golden rules in our design club at Tara Shaw is that you can, there are no stories, can never tell. Oh, that's a great, that's a great thing to go by. Because that's <laughs> really true. <laughs> now, I know you also got involved working with Restoration Hardware. How did that happen? And are you still involved with them? I'm just curious. So I developed a furniture line in 2007 called Terrachon Maison. I had been working on it since 2004. 
and uh, I launched with 46 items in 07, right in the middle of the recession. And I was, I was frankly shocked that it was, it was successful. And so then my operations manager said, you know, we've got to go to High Point. High Point's calling, and then Atlanta was calling, and Dallas was calling, Las Vegas. Uh, and so the story goes, so in New York. So we opened showrooms in all these um, design centers. And uh, the line grew, and by 2013, it was about 260 items. But uh, Restoration Hardware had visited me several times during that process, those years of the line evolving. And then they um, asked me to come to their headquarters in California. And so I, I told my husband, it was so funny, I said, you know, this store uh, would like us to go and meet with them, their executive team. And so my husband's an attorney, Robert Walsh, here in New Orleans. And I said, I'd like you to come with me. And um, we flew up there, met with them. And um, they just, we fine-tuned the line to about 60-plus pieces that we would ship to them uh, for them to manufacture in the factories that I had trained. So I got out of the manufacturing process. I don't really know that manufacturing was my wheelhouse, but when I started it in 07, um, something happened and the person that was supposed to run that uh, could not, and so I had to step in in Asia. So I started with one factory in China, and then I, opened, I expanded it to about seven factories, and then four factories in India. So I would be working in the middle of the night in this office, you know, because of the different time zones, I had, you know, all these people overseeing, you know, QCs overseeing the product in Asia. But, you know, type A personality, you know, I'm addicted to detail. So I was always in Asia. I was always on the phone. I'm in the middle of, you know, at, at that time we did Skype. Now we Zoom. But so I did that for seven years and I was so tired. So when they told me, when they asked me to come to California RH in 2013, I was grateful because I didn't want to manufacture anymore. I wanted to license with a company and make royalty and be able to sleep at night because you know you might have a contract with a factory in China the contract might say they need to dry the wood to 14% they might cut corners let's say the container comes in the woods at 18% the wood splits so i felt like i could never really sleep so that happened and uh, they took 60 plus pieces. I'm still currently working with them today. I'm grateful, you know, I'm just riding on grateful, frankly. And um, I just love the creative process of creating furniture as well and accessories. Well, you're magnificent in the, what you do. And I want to get back to the book and um, say a little bit about it. But before I do, is there anything that you would like to ask or any information um, as we come to the close of the interview? Anything extra you want to add? Not that you have to or whatever, just if anything comes up. You know, I've, I've, I wrote the book because I had a passion to teach people about furniture. You know, I was trying to find myself and who I was and what my furniture style was. And so there's a whole chapter in the book on periods and furniture and then seven design projects that explain why I use those periods and, and how you work contemporary with that. I also wanted to give people, equip them in case they wanted to do this as their own journey. 
you know, however small. You don't have to start with a container of antiques. You might be going to the Paris flea market to find your dream armoire. I don't know. But I just wanted to give them a chapter of where I shop in Europe and also how to shop in the United States, my favorite shop shopping spots, plus how to negotiate. You know, I, I feel like, you know, I've been gifted with this journey of finding myself through furniture. And, you know, I just wanted to gift it back. That is fabulous. And um, I, you have to buy this book. It will probably run out, so hurry up and buy it. And I want to end with this quote. Actually, I'd love for you, if you wouldn't mind, to read the quote, that quote that I told you yesterday. I'm going to give you the book here. Um, the first line, the first sentence, which I love. Okay. Growing up, I had two strong role models in my mother and my grandmother, women who were very different from each other, but who both had one thing in common, fearlessness. Their homes reflected these different outlooks. My mother loved to paint and lined her walls with contemporary art. She was a minimalist and her furniture was and still is all white. I remember on Saturdays, we would walk around picking the lint from the white carpet. My grandmother, on the other hand, was a world-class collector. Whether it was glassware, books, or fabrics, her desire to acquire knew no bounds. She had a highly organized fabric room filled to the ceiling with textiles of every imaginable geometry and color. She loved to sew and would make me clothes so I had bespoke fashion from a very young age. Both of these women made an indelible impact on my life. They were risk takers and constantly encouraged me to color outside the lines and walk through walls of fear that spring up in life which can be daunting for an adult, much less a child. Thank you. I love that. So be fearless, take risks, and color outside the lines. So thank you so much, Tara. I'm so appreciative Thank you, of this Adele, time. for and taking the time with me. I so appreciate it. Well, I loved it. I loved it. Okay.